Hello guys, how are we doing today? Good sir. Alright, I see. We are still alive and kicking at CSA. That means you guys are surviving, that's great. All right, so today we are going to continue on our journey, right? Um, all right, I wonder how much people submitted exercise one. Hmm. Exercise one. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, oh man. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry. No, I'm looking at exercise too. Because I was just saying, not one person. But actually, um, quite a few people submitted exercise one. That's great, right? Um, some people found the tutorial informative. Um, so I'm guessing you guys like the fact that the classes are available online after we have the class right but last week was a bit of a of a field um class and it went a little late because of the technical challenges but everybody has photoshop good and ready to go i hope let me see what the chat is saying no sir some people know. Oh, wow. Hmm. All right. Um, I see people saying all sorts of stuff. Wow. Evelyn. Um, that's quite an um, uh, experience. Is everything okay? Do you still have access to your... Uh... Yes, sir. Okay. Wow. But I couldn't, I couldn't um, do anything. Okay. Okay, I understand. I understand. I hope you can make it through. And um, 
you still have access to your equipment and stuff so that you can proceed. All right. Joshua, how are you doing? Good, sir. Okay, did I frighten you a while ago? Like, what? Why is sir calling me? What did I do? <laughs> how is studio going, Joshua? Studio is going well so far. Okay. Sometimes persons would answer, well, studio is... Is studio. It's kind of like asking, how is work? And you say, boy, work is work. <laughs> but the fact that you say it's going, that's that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So, so keep it up. All right. So this week we are proceeding to exercise two. Now, I have here our course timeline because this is what we want to keep track of as we go along, right? Guys, please don't forget to check this on the site to see where we are. So, um, let's see. Um, we started um, exercise. Here we go. Exercise one. We already finished that. This time, we'll be going to exercise two, right? And we're going to also be looking on, we're going to be continuing a conversation on calculating image sizes in this session. And then in the afternoon session, we'll be doing the same thing again, but this time we'll be doing a next exercise and this one will be even more exciting, right? Okay. So, um, I assume that we're going to stick to the schedule. So, we're going to come back later at um, 7 to, um, to do the work session. Am I correct in my assumptions? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Cool, cool. No problemo. All right, so I wanted to, if you remember last class, I'm going to click on the mirror board now. You guys can follow me there if you wish. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's use this one. All right, here we go. Now, last class, this is what we were talking about. We're talking about image size. And who was it again that told me that 3000 by 1686 is a big picture? Who was it again? I can't remember. Forgive me. Can't remember the name. Hmm? Hmm? I had asked you, we looked on this image last week. And what we learned is that, uh, let me open Photoshop as we speak. So what we learned is that an image has, um, every image has what's called resolution. And any image that you open on your computer, it shows you what the resolution is. So this particular image was a part of a architectural presentation which um, I don't have here. It's in the, it's actually in the folder. Um, let me, let me open that image again. Here we go. DDM. All right, and oh, I think there we go.
All right, there we go. Right, so we were looking at this architectural presentation and we spoke about how this is a lot of sheets to print. And just because something looks sharp on your computer, we don't know if printing that on this size will actually be sharp. We also learned that sharpness is really determined by our experience of the picture. So for example, when you look on your phone screen, it is pretty sharp because it's small, right? But if we should blow up our phone screen, an image that looks sharp on a phone screen big, then it will now become blurry. But on the phone screen, it looked very sharp. So the question that we were asking ourselves is, okay, when we're going to print something um, for pinup in our presentations, that the size of your sheet is much bigger than the size of your laptop screen, right? So Jada, what I was asking is, how do you know if when you look on the, this thing on your laptop screen, how do you know that when you print it three times the size, it's going to be sharp enough? Right, Jada? Are we here, Jada? Jada? No? Ah, I see you found the mute button, Jada, right? So I don't know if you've ever experienced this where you might have something editing in Photoshop. So for example, there were exercise that we did last week. How do we know if that image can be printed on a 24 by 36, right? How do we know? Um, it's almost impossible to tell from your tiny lap laptop screen because when you compare the size of a, of a um, 24 by 36 sheet to the size of your laptop screen, your laptop, your laptop screen is much sharper. Now, you can zoom into the image, right? And we kind of um, looked at an example of that. I'm looking for that image, which is... Do, 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 do. Ah, here we are. Um, if I can find it. Right, okay, here we go. All right, so we have Photoshop here. Right, and so this is my working file. This is what every, everybody should have their version of this, right? Meaning with the with the, with the sky changed and with the um, the car with the blur, and you get extra points if you have the trans the reflection and everything. All right, now. How would I know if this image, suppose I did this image here, let's say that I went downtown and I took this image downtown because I want to include it in my sheet and then I carried it into Photoshop, put, you know, did some manipulations to it and now I'm ready to print this image. Now we know already that we can zoom all the way in till we start to see these squares, right? And these squares are called pixels. And we know that if we were looking at the image this close, this looks quite blurry. Right? Right, Karen? This image looks quite blurry. Right, Karen? Yes, it is. But all of a sudden, this same image looks very sharp here. So the question is, okay, on the computer, I can zoom in and out. But when I print this to go on my 24 by 36 sheet, how will I know if it's going to be sharp enough? Now, if I look on the properties of this image, so I can 
open this in the Windows Image Viewer. And remember, we did this. Uh, where do you go for properties again? Uh, it's here. Information. Uh, I keep forgetting. Um, prop file info. Here we go. Right. So here is the resolution of this image here. So all images has this resolution. So clearly we can tell, we can use this resolution to determine whether or not an image will be sharp enough. Because for example, um, um, Swaby, if I sent you this image in WhatsApp and I said, hey Swaby, this is for my presentation. So the image I send you in WhatsApp, Print it for me on a 24 by 36. And when Swaby look on our phone now, you say, oh yeah, man, this image looks sharp. But then of course, when you send it to print, it looks absolutely horrible, right? So, uh, where are you you're here yes so what we want to do we want to find out a way that we can calculate if this image will be sharp enough now we are going to do a little math guys so i want us to just i want you to just follow me now there is a formula for working out real world print size for example in the computer, this image measures 3,000 by 1,686 in the computer, in the virtual world. But what is this in the real world? Like, what does 3,000 pixel translate to? Does it translate to 10 inches? Does it translate to 24 inches? What does 3,000 pixels translate to? And this is the secret that we want to find out we want to know oops oops we want to know what is let's make this smaller Yes, we want to know the real world size of this resolution. Can I, can I change my board? Can I, oh, okay. Yeah, let's definitely use the app. Yeah, let's use the app. It's supposed to be world, but our world. Okay. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. I want this to be a dark gray black brown. Yes, because I like dark mode better. All right. There we go. Let's get a background over here. Right. So we want to know what is the real world measurement when an image tells me that it's 3000 by um, uh, by this measurement. Now, there is actually a formula to knowing how to translate um, pixels to real world. And that formula is... Here we go. That formula is, let me just grab this and head over back to here. Oops, not you. There we go. Now, what we want to get 
is the real world print height and the real world print width, right? So let's 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 match this out. So we want to. So the the, the formula is resolution height. Where is everything can't fit in my arm on my screen right so resolution height divided by the dpi gives us the real world height and this is part of what we want here um the other part that we want is we want the because th remember this is just the height so meaning this is just uh, let's make this a little smaller so we can see what's happening right here we go Right, so this gives us the height of the image. What does, what does, remember, um, let me do this a little better so that we can follow exactly. If we have this arrow here, and we're going to make that a double arrow, and we're going to say that this is 3000 pixels. And we're going to do the same thing here. And this is 1686 pixels. So, according to our formula here, let me pull this down here. According to my formula here, this real world height is equal to that So that is the real world height here. So if we want to find out what 1,686 pixels is, oh, you have a question? Webley, you have a question? Or is it Weebly? Okay, give forward. 1686 is the real world height. No, 1686 no. is the pixels, PX. Oh, but you have it, you have it at what the real world height. Right, because we want to find out what does 1686 pixels equal to in oh, the real world. Okay. Then the next thing we want to find out is, let's put this in green maybe. We want to find out what does 3,000 pixels equal to in the real world. Now, in order to find out these two answers, we have the formula here. So if we want to find out real world uh, height, sorry, this is width. And this is width. So this is the formula. If we take the resolution, the height resolution, divided by the DPI, we can get what the real world height is. So therefore, when I give you a picture and you look in the properties and the picture said that this picture is 
six, 1686 pixels tall, you can know, oh, 1686 is equal to 8 inches, 10 inches, 20 inches. And therefore, if you get the answer and the answer is telling you, so for example, if you want to print on a 24 by 36 inch sheet and the real world height of the picture that I gave you is 8 inches, but you want to fit it on a 24 inches tall sheet, then what does that mean you're going to have to do? Um, Gifford. You're going to have to do what? Change your resolution. No, you're going to have to stretch the image because mm -hmm. the real world height is 8 inches, but you want it to be 24 inches. So you're going to have to stretch the image. And what happens when you stretch an image? The pixels get bigger. And? Let me give you a the clue. The quality lessons. Exactly. So when I start to stretch an image, the image starts to get more blurry. Because remember, when you're stretching that image, you're not creating more pixels. It's not like when you watch CSI or one of those crime shows and they say enhance and you just start to generate more pixels, <laughs> right? The, the, there's a finite amount of pixels in an image and you can't get and you can't just magically get more pixels from that image if the picture has 3000 pixels across the width then it only has 3000 pixels it can't be you can't magically get 3500 pixels if you stretch the image is the same 3000 pixels you're stretching so you're not getting any sharper you get me so if we want to find out what does 1686 equal to in real world what is the we already have the resolution so what are we missing what are we missing to work out this formula dpi sir exactly so this is now the magic question how do we get the dpi because obviously we can get the the resolution from the image because when we go into the properties of the image the properties said that oh it was 3000 by 1686 now let me give you the mistake that you should avoid like the plague notice when you look at the properties of an image it gives you the dpi so let me go back to my example here when i open this image earlier and i look at in file info it gave me the dpi here so the dpi of this image is so let me put that one here and i'm going to just drag that picture here Now, this image, this picture now, is telling me that the width of this picture is 3,300, and the height of this picture is 2,550 pixels. pixels now the dpi here says 300 for this image but the dpi here says 72 now this is the biggest mistake that most people make when printing right windows cannot tell you what the dpi of an image is photoshop cannot tell you what the image is no device or software can should tell you what the dpi of an image is so for example when you carry an image to print and maybe the person that's printing it says what's the dpi 
and you know you look in windows and you say oh the dpi is 72 and you tell the person the dpi is 72 that is a blatant lie because the real secret behind dpi is that you determine what the dpi is not the file so let me repeat that again you determine what the dpi is not the file so whenever you click on an image and it gives you an dpi you should absolutely ignore it because you will see why in a bit that you cannot be told what the dpi of an image is it is not something that is determined um by an image sorry by a software or an equipment now a software and an equipment can tell you limits on dpi so for example when you go to print something the the person with the printer can say hey this printer cannot print more than 300 dpi or for example when you go to buy a projector right the projector can say this projector cannot display an image more than 72 dpi or when you go to buy your phone the phone will say well this phone has a maximum dpi of 200 or 100 or 96 so dpi is a value that devices tell you because it's like a hard limit this device can only display x dpi when you see the billboards out on the street the ones that have images that move it has a dpi limit as well so does billboards when when you're printing a big billboard the printers that are used to print the billboard have a dpi limit now the secret is the dpi value whenever you're working out this formula how you get the dpi is you decide what the dpi is and i know that's a little weird to say right because it sounds like you're just making this number up now in one way of considering it you are making the number up but you're making it up within a certain framework so let me explain that framework to you oh no sorry not that image um Okay, I will soon locate my my chart. I have it in a slide somewhere, but um, I will find it a little later. For our purposes in CSA, there are three DPI values that we need to keep track of, right? The first one is for digital devices. The next one is for, I'm going to say billboards. This is large prints. And the last one, and the most important one for us in CSA, is going to be posters. It's going to be like um, documents. As a matter of fact, there is, I would call it, there is like four. So, let me show you what these values are. So, um... And this is not, uh, how you put it? This is not law. This is kind of like just guidelines, right? Okay, right. And 
you can find these um well oh, hold on let me just i'm gonna make this i'm gonna just show you this thing and then i'll show you the charts that you can use as a guide okay so let's talk about um document prints okay yes i just need a picture yeah here we go all right so the first one is document prints so documents and i like this this random image here i pick up because it has this is this, this is like a letter size. You have text, you have graphics, you have, you know, pictures, whatever it is. Now, the DPI, the recommended DPI, so I'm going to say document recommended DPI is 300. And this is for document. Um, what's the average size of a document? Anybody? Hello? 11 by 8.5. There you go. Or it could also be... What happened to legal no, size? By 40. Exactly. So those are what we consider like um, document, right? Now the next category I'm going to call, I'm going to say it is, um, I'm going to call it poster. So I want to give an idea. Um, I want to give an example. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one, yeah, let me pick this one. Not exactly what I wanted to use, but fine. I'm just looking for some examples here. Now, poster. Now, the reason I use this image here is because usually this is the kind of scenario that you use a poster in, meaning that a, the, your experience of a poster is a little bit different than your experience of a document. Like when you are, when you are viewing a document, you are holding it up like right in front of you right though that is not a hard and fast rule because you could also view a poster kind of like this which i don't know did you see any of your lectures kind of going up to your poster and doing looking like that as well anybody Guys? Oh, yes, I forget. I have to call some name. <laughs> Matthew, are you here? Matthew? Yeah. Right. Have you ever noticed? Like when you're presenting some of these posters, this is it the typical um I would say um way that it's presented. I'm gonna replace this image with this one. Right. So you are here speaking, your audience is here, and chances are you have your presentation that is mounted. Also, sometime after the presentation, maybe somebody might go up close to check out what you have on the floor plans and read what you have here. So this is the experience of a poster. 
Now, the recommended DPI for a poster is usually somewhere between 300 and 150. All right, let's go even bigger than that, right? Um, and for this one, I'm going to just use the example of a billboard, for example. Um, let me use something that has maybe a picture of like um, a building or something like that. Yeah, maybe something something that's more architectural. Like, here we go. So I'm going to call this billboard. Uh, so this is billboard. This is poster. And the DPI that's recommended for billboards is going to be usually it's like between maybe 50 to 150. Right? So imagine you render this picture in SketchUp or maybe it's, a, maybe it's a billboard with a photo on it, right? Like maybe you needed to take a picture of, I don't know, maybe it's a picture of a sunset or something, whatever that picture is, right? So let's say you have billboards that's kind of like this. And I wanted to show you an idea of scale because... Um, Billboards are usually kind of big. Um, I wanted one with a person for scale. All right. Right, but you get the idea that the billboards are usually big. Now, billboards, posters, and documents, they all have the different recommended ranges for DPI. Now, there is another category here, and I'm going to put this one even before documents, because this is perhaps one of the most popular ones especially during COVID. And this one is I'm going to uh, let's use computer. Yes, yeah, use computer. Right. So Let's use this image. And I'm going to call this digital screens. Now, digital screens recommended DPI value. Actually, I should put this one down here because we're kind of going from high to low, right? So at the bottom of the list is digital screens. This is your laptop, your phone, your projector. Um, what other digital screens do we have now? Um, anything that has pixels on it. And that is usually in the region of 72 to 96. All right. So we have these. I'm going to say these are the most common categories for experiencing any form of artwork. Right? I wanted to make this even bigger for you. Yeah. There we go.
All right. So I want to ask now, Okari, are you here, Okari? Yes, sir. What do you notice at least the trend with the first three? What happens to the DPI? Sir, so it decreases as it, the image gets larger. It decreases as the image gets larger. That is also true. Um, let me ask another one. Um, um, how about Michaela? It's Michaela. Michaela? That's the right pronunciation. Michaela. Michaela. Hey, Michaela. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What else do you notice? As we go from document to poster to billboard, somebody mentioned that the DPI is getting lower while the image gets bigger. What else do you notice is a trend here for the first three? Um, it's a range. It's not just one for the last two. Okay, cool. Okay. Fair enough. It's a range. That's an important point as well. All right. I'm waiting for one magic point. I'm waiting for somebody to hit the nail directly on the head. Who can tell me what is a trend between these three? Apart from the ones um, that the image is getting bigger. That we have a document here. We have a poster here. And then we have a billboard here. I want a better picture for the billboard. I'm going to open it to the floor. Anybody? Is it because it's printed? Say again? Is, is it because it's printed? Uh, well, all of them is printed. So what is the trend that is changing as you go down or up this list? This is... What was that one? Size. The size? Yep, yeah, somebody mentioned the size already. What was the other one the other person mentioned? So it's decreasing by half the amount. So each time the image gets bigger, the DPI is decreasing by the range moving mm. moves down half its amount. Well, I mean half ish because it's a range. But yeah, we already said that already. Anybody? <laughs> okay. I will give you a clue. Let's see if anybody can get it. I will give you a clue. Here is the clue. I'm going to draw the clue on screen. I'm going to draw it little by little. This is the first part of the clue. Anybody? Come on. Come on. No? Nobody? Distance. What was that? Distance? Distance of what? Oh, wow. Getting feedback. The distance of? The person. To the image. Exactly. Chin, you win the virtual $500. US too, but virtual. <laughs> right. That is what is happening. At this point here, um, this, this is the main thing. And I'm telling you, as simple as all this sounds, Somehow, you have people that graduate from university, people that are running print shops all over the world, and this very simple fact, I don't know if they never learn it or them forget about it, or I, I, I'm not sure, but um, I need a picture of a... Um, um, I need a picture of a um, um, okay. 
How about this? Um, Oh Lord, I'm trying to find a picture of... Okay, fine. I will just use this one. I'm trying to find a picture of an eyeball, actually. So I'm just going to use this, this one here. So the picture of the viewer to the... Um, this is fun. Trying to find something that represents what you want <laughs> to the illustration i'm going to drag this down here there we go the picture of the viewer to the image so with a document about how far are you on average from a document who can tell me give me a distance on average, if you're looking at a document, how far are you? About 10 inches, I would say. About 10 inches, fair enough. What about the billboard? Like, think up, not billboard, um, poster. Think about your last um, studio critique. About how far were you averagely? And I know it, it varies because I'm sure you've been in a scenario like this where these are your critiques are the classmates. These are your, 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 your artwork. But then you've probably been in this situation where the person is here and this is your artwork. So on average, what's the farest distance you think you're away from a poster? So about six. Six what? Six feet. And then what's the closest? Um, I'd say the same 10 inches. Probably about 10 inches. Fair enough. All right. Now, what about the billboard? About how far do you think you're away from a billboard? And I'm trying to give you two different <laughs> scenarios here. About how close, what's the closest you think you'll be to a and I know billboard varies in size, but I'm going to say, you know, something that's more than 15 feet wide and more than 10 feet tall. Anybody? I'd say about 15 to 30 feet. About how much? How close? About 15 to 30 feet. About 15 feet to 30 feet? Yeah. yeah. Mm, I would argue about that 30. Think about the last time you drove somewhere and you saw a billboard. How far was that? It's by far, you So I'd say it would be 40 feet. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe 40 to 100? Yeah. Have you seen billboards on the top of buildings? Yeah, that's true. Exactly. So, I'm going to put 15. I'm going to put maybe. So, anyway, from 50, I'm going to put, let's put this in the middle. Let's say 30 to 100 feet. Now, when you look on these three, you can definitely notice a trend. And the trend is the images get, the, 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 the artwork gets bigger. The viewer gets further away and the DPI gets less. All right. So can you guys see those dis distinctions there? I hope. No. I'm going to throw a wrench in the wheel now, right? 
And I don't know if you know that saying, you know, to throw a wrench in the wheel. Because this looks pretty like, you know, you can follow this trend. However, your computer screen, this guy deserves to go in a room by itself. Because what is the average distance between you and the computer screen? Anybody can tell me? Jump. Wait, 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 wait. Let's hear from somebody else. Senior. Are you here, Senior? <laughs> what was that, Karen? About 24 inches. 24 inch. Wow, so specific. Okay. About 24 inch. About two feet. <laughs> Let me see. How far am I from my monitor? Actually, that's pretty close. That's pretty good. Yeah. About two feet. I'm about two feet from my monitor. Yeah. On average, like, what about this? This is digital screen. So um, give me another digital screen. Um, a projector. No, your phone. Duh, your phone. About how far are your eyes from your phone on average? I was about to ask. About okay, about one foot. Cool. So I have one foot. Um, Joel, are you here? Yes, sir. Give me another digital screen. We said phone, we said computer, which includes laptops as well. Give me another digital screen. Another digital screen. Mm -hmm. Um. What else is out there? A laptop, sir. We said laptop already. Um. We said phone. Tablets. Ah, tablet. And about how far is your face from your tablet when you're using a tablet? Um, on, uh, average, like, on average, you don't have to be super accurate. 18 inches. Wow, so specific. Okay, about a foot, foot and a half. Okay, a foot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're still within this range one to two feet. Yeah. All right, now there is something weird going on here which I don't know if you guys can see that. But when we take a print, oh, hold on, I copied this by mistake. Yeah, when we take a print, which DPI recommended is 300, but we compare that to a screen, which DPI recommended is like a third of that or even less, but yet... The distance that we are away from these devices is about the same. Anybody notice this weird trend? With everything else, it follows a trend. So, for example, you know, you have a you have a um you have a document, you're like about 10 inches. I'm gonna say a foot then, like our foot is almost since we're everything is in feet. So I'm gonna say one foot. I'm going to say one foot to six foot. So I'm going to say a foot here. Just to keep everything um pretty standard. Right. So if you follow the trend here, we can see that, okay, with a document, it's right up against our face. It's about a foot. It's 300 DPI. For a poster, mm, it could be six feet. It could be. Maybe it could even be eight feet. You know, depending. Think about when, you're crit when your critique is full and there's a lot of people there. Maybe some of them are about 10 feet away. 
from your poster. Even more than six feet. But the DPI gets less. The picture gets bigger because your poster is much bigger. Then what about billboards? Uh, hold on. Am I deleting these by accident? Oops. All right. I might have deleted this by accident. Uh, what did we say billboards was again? Billboards was about 30 feet to 40 feet. Yeah. Billboards, it gets even way bigger than a poster. But the distance is way further and the DPI goes down way less. But when we look on screens... You know, on average, your screen size is about the size of a of a of a letter size. I mean, some screens are bigger, but some screens are smaller, like your phone. You get what I'm saying? But on average, a screen is like anywhere between a TV. Well, TVs can get big. Hmm. You know, but what I'm trying to get at is that. Print, the recommended for print, when you're close to the print, is 300 DPI. But the recommended for um, screens is 72 DPI. Now, this is super important, guys, because this is what causes us to judge an image on a screen and then assume that that image, when printed, would be the same thing. And this is because who can tell me what is a difference between this and this? We already said that they are similar. They have similar sizes, similar distances. But what is the difference between this graphic here and this graphic here? And that question goes to Marvel. Are you here, Marvel? Are you following? Present. All right. Can you tell me the difference between between these two? One is um, presentation of one is complete Um, one is presentation, and what you said about the other one? Screen. Screen. Not quite. All right, um, Thea, you want to give this a try? Before Thea, um, Evelyn, you wanted to give it a try? No? What is the difference? No. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm not hearing you. Sir, I have internet issues. Oh, oh okay. All right, Theo. Are you there, Theo? Yeah, so right here. What is the difference between these two? They, they have some similarities, but they have one distinct difference. I mean, the DPI is different, but not that. Um. They are about the same size, yes. You are about the same distance, yes. So I want to say lights. The light mm. getting warmer, but okay. What about it? Um, 
because the screen is uh, electrically voice and the paper is not. Is actually covered by what? I said that the screen, mm -hmm. the digital screen that is, is an electrical device and the paper is not. Yeah. Hmm. You are absolutely correct. Another virtual $500 for you, right? And this time you get it in pounds, not even US, because it, you know, it, it, it weigh more. <laughs> So you are exactly right. These two graphic displays are made of different materials. And because they're made up of different materials, this is why the, DP, the recommended DPI values are different. So what does that mean? If you have a page in front of you, and you have a screen that is the exact size of this page, right? Just by the nature of the screen that you have in front of you, this tablet, because of the materials it's made up of, it's light, it's whatever, right? It, I want to say, it appears to be just as sharp as the page. but it is really not, right? And the material that your graphic is being presented on also determines the DPI. Now, a while ago, all of these that we said here are printed, but when you're producing things for a screen, it is no longer about the size anymore, kinda right so what happened is that this is where you meet up on the limits of technology most printers can print up to 300 even 600 dpi for those really elite printers but on average most printer can print up to 300 dpi i don't think there is any computer monitor that exists that can go higher than 100 dpi yet Maybe the most expensive Apple monitor that you can possibly afford, then maybe it can go up to that, right? But what I'm trying to get at is that because computer screens are made up of dots and lights, it doesn't require as much detail, right? the details will just get lost in the dots that are displayed. So for example, um, if you have ever watched, um, I don't know if you've ever had the old time TV. Nobody have an no old time TV, the CRT, the big back one, anybody? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. But even if you have a very old TV and you watch some, high definition content on that old tv it is not going to look as sharp even though it's the same high definition content right so what i'm trying to get at is that screens can only display a certain amount of dpi so just by that nature details are being like lost and smudged together when they look on a screen so when you look on a screen, an image would look much sharper just by the nature of it. But when you look on that very same image printed, it looks like a horrible mess. Even though both of, even though the screen in front of your eyeballs and the printed paper in front of your eyeballs are like generally the same size, the printer will look more blurry. And it's because of this that you need this formula because if you're editing your sheet on this tiny laptop screen which looks perfectly fine when you go to print it printing requires a higher dpi and that changes the game basically so we have this rule book to go by here right so with this rule book 
we can now complete our formula, right? Oh, Question, to... sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to, so I'm trying to match it up, right? Mm -hmm. So, deep, can it be said then um, that the lower the DPI, the more blurry the image? Let's put it this way. The DPI is a reflection of your experience of the image. The closer you are, you require more detail. The farther you are, you need less detail so that you perceive the image as sharp. So for example, if you are looking at a billboard and you're 100 feet away, the billboard looks sharp to you. If you are 200 feet away, the billboard still looks sharp to you, meaning the billboard does not look blurry. There is a certain threshold that when you pass beyond, the image starts to look blurry, right? And that threshold is what we're going to find out. No, so my definition of, I mean, the, the scientific definition of DPI is dots per square inch, but that doesn't really tell you what the DPI represents, right? So equipment have a limit on DPI. So for example, let's say that you're printing, let's say that you're printing a poster and you choose, because with poster you have a range. So you choose to print your poster using 300 DPI. But when you go to the print shop, it says, oh, my printer can only print at 100 DPI. So DPI has a limit depending on the equipment. So for example, your monitor. Your monitor only, most monitors, 99% of all computer monitors have a DPI limit of 72, 72 dots. So every inch of your panel can only fit 72 dots. If you have like a retina screen or whatever, then maybe you can fit 96 dots. But that is pretty much where screens are at nowadays, right? The dot in a screen is bigger than the dot from a printer nozzle, right? So because the dot in a screen is bigger, it is like... I want to say more blurry, but I, that's not the right word to say it. For those of you, a good example of this would be... Anybody play retro video games like, you know, the long time video game them from before you're born, like Mario 1 or... Anybody play those old type of video card? Or... Anybody watch an old movie, like... I don't know, Commando or Terminator, Rambo or I don't know, one of these old time movies, <laughs> right? Um, those older movies and those older games, they look nicer on a lower DPI screen because those screens kind of make the image just fuzz into each other it, it, you want to say blurry but blurry is not the right word it's you know because blurry is a little bit vague so that's what i'm getting at the screen can only display up to 72 dpi anyway so by that nature it it, it cannot display as much detail as a printed document because the nozzles in a printer those little nozzles that shoot ink most printers can fit 300 of those dots in one square inch, but your phone can only display a certain amount of dots per square inch. As a matter of fact, nowadays a phone have a higher DPI than monitors, but that's another story. All right. So the reason why I'm telling you this, and I'm reiterating it over and over again, is because... This is how we can solve the formula. And it seems that I keep moving these things all over the place. Okay, let's put this back here. Let's put this back here.
All right, who's going to volunteer to work this out for me? So back to this image. What is the real world size of this image that I want to print and pin up for more for my studio presentation? So imagine that this image here is going to be on this sheet here. When I print it on this sheet, will these people find this image blurry? Say again. You said it's going to be blurry? The screen is blurry. Oh, well, um... Oh, the yes. screen is blurry. Yes. Right. It's supposed to clear up now. So, so what we want to do now, what I want to find out from you guys is... If I want to print this image... and fit it on this screen right here. I want to use my formula to determine if this image will look blurry to these persons that are looking on this image. Will it be blurry? Remember, if these persons go to the back of the room, the image will be sharp. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, guys? So this is the this is the mind game that you're playing whenever you go to print something. It's all about how does your largest viewer view what you are printing, right? So um Gifford, I nominate you to work out what the real world print height is for this image. Now remember the context. The context is important. This is the context. So how do we go about doing this um, Gifford? Wait a minute, can you guys see my screen? I was just about to say that I can only see your mouse moving. Oh, okay. Hang on. Oh, my bad. Yes. There we go. Right, Gifford. Right. So this is the context. And this is the image that I have on my computer. And when I look at the properties, the, the, the properties say this image is 225 by 3,300. Actually, no, this was the other image that was up here. Oh, man, I totally, like, messed up my um my thing. Uh, how big was this again? It was, like, 16-something. Anybody remember? Sixteen eighty six by three thousand. Right, Gifford, go ahead now. Are you there, Gifford? No, who else is here? Davina, are you here? The same. Right. How can I start to work this out? Start to work out. So, so like, you mean how you choose the DPI? Right. How do I get this answer here? I want to find out what is my real world height and my real real world width for an image that is 3000 by 1686. I have the resolution. I have the height resolution. But how do I select the DPI? How do I determine what the DPI is? Sir, so you first have to know like how far away they are going to view it from. 
Right. And what category do I fall in? Um, document, poster, billboard, or screen? So what the what what um what category do I fall in for this one? So you have the the screen. Remember my objective. I want to put it here. I want to print oh. it and write. This is the objective. So print. Which one are the prints? Remember the categories. Here they are. Stuff. exactly so i am going to say the, the height resolution is 1686 pixels and the dpi i'm using is 150 So therefore, my real world height is and is one fifty pixels per inch. So what is my real world height, Davina? Come, bring up your calculator. Eleven point two four. Eleven point two four inches. All right. So this is my real world print height, based on the fact that I am going to be here. Now, what is the real world? Print with um, Janelle. No, Janelle. No, Janelle. <laughs> Are you there, Janelle? Yes, sir. Right. How do I work out my real world print with? What values do I use? You said I had to put in my earpods, but it's kind of long. Okay. All right. Have you ready your pods? <laughs> Okay, while generally read is the pods, let's move. Okay, sir, I'm here. Oh, you're ready. All right. I'm here. All right. Great. Yes. How do I work out the real world width now? I have the real world height, which is 11.24 inches. So what is the real world width? So my width resolution is Sir, would it be three thousand over one fifty? Three thousand divided by three thousand pixels divided by one fifty. Pixels per inch. So, what is the real world width of this picture now, generally? Twenty, sir. Twenty inches. All right. So, therefore, what this formula is telling us is that. When this image 
is printed based on the fact that these this is where my viewers will be this will translate to 11.2 inches and 20 inches now what size do i want to fit this image in leonardo Remember, this is our scenario. We want to print this here. So what is the size of this area that I want to print this image on? Are you here, Leonardo? Sorry, I'm here in a boat. I keep getting disconnected. Okay. All right. What about Sidal? What is the size? What size do I want to fit this 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 image on? Cuz remember, I just found out that this image that I have here works out to a real world size of 11 inches by 20 inches and i want to print it here so what size do i want to fit it in all right dear sidal Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What is that size that I want to fit the image in? On the red box. Yes. What is that size? Like a that's weird. Like probably like a. Just give me the closest yeah. estimate. I got 36 by 30 or something or that. Right. So let's call it a 24 by 36. So 24, 24 inches by 36 inches. So this is my sheet. So imagine I have my sheet here. So this is my board. Let's say that, you know, this is my board here. Let me put this in the background. So this is my board here. Um, what was I speaking to? Sidal, right. This is my board here. And this is Sidal in architecture form, right? In architecture, everybody is a triangle and a circle head, right? So this is you, Sidal, standing up by your board. Actually, no, Sidal, you might be a little taller for real. Oops. You see yourself, Sidal? Yes, sir. And you want to now print this document. You want to print this document. When you look on your computer, it tells you that it is 3,000 pixels wide by 1686 pixels tall. When you do the calculation, you find out that 1686 pixels tall is equal to 11 inches by 20 inches. You want to print this on 24 inches by 36 inches, right? So what does that tell you, Sidal? First, I just printed it as if then the, it's going to come out kind of blurry. And why is it going to come out blurry? Because? Because it will be stretching the pixels. Exactly. So this is what... 
this is what your picture would this is this is the this is the real world print size of your image 20 inches by maybe it would be a little bigger probably about that yeah 20 inches by 11 inches so 11 inches is about half the height and that is based on this don't forget this you know this is what determines it all if you use the formula for working it as a billboard um um shemario what would that mean if i swapped out the formula and use the dpi from the billboard calculation what would that mean Are you there, Shamaria? Sh Shamaria? Yes, sir. Yes. I work this I work this size out based on using the dpi for a poster but what if i worked it out using the calculation for the dpi for a billboard what would happen what values do what kind of values do you think i would get you don't have to tell me the values what would it tell me about this image Sure, sir. Anybody else? Anybody want to take this one? Remember, when we work this out, this gives us the real world height and the real world width compared to the width of our sheet. So from our calculations, we say, oh, this image is actually about half the size in real world dimensions. So what would happen if I was to, if in my formula, I decided to use the calculations for billboard instead of the calculations for poster? What would that do for this image? Anybody want to take that? So you get a bigger print of it exactly and remember what that bigger printout is saying it is saying that if i'm using the fact that i am at a distance a billboard distance of i don't know 30 to 40 feet or whatever it is then that calculation is telling me that this resolution is more than enough because my image the real world size of that image it would end up being, I don't know, like twenty, like thirty odd inches to fifty odd inches, and that is because you're farther away. So because you're closer away, you're because you're closer, you're going to require a bigger image. So this is why when you run the formula, it tells you that look, if you're going to be in a critique, and this is you presenting. And you're using this image based on this resolution it is really you're going to have to scale it up by double now the general rule is you never want to scale an image more than double because think about if you have a little tiny icon maybe that icon looks fine on your phone but you want to put it on the cover of your document and you scale up that icon big then obviously it's going to be blurry. So the general rule of thumb is you don't want to scale for twice the amount, more than twice the amount. So the answer to this is you may get away with this one. 
because remember this is the range they can either they're not going to be further than six foot maybe 10 foot but they're not going to be 30 feet away from your poster <clears throat> at the same time they can be one foot away now if you should work out what this calculation is using the 300 you would get a much smaller image meaning that you would have to scale it up three times or four times the amount what does that mean when the person go up and look on this image it's going to be blurry all right guys i know that might be a little bit to digest but i'm going to leave it there I'm not going to overwhelm your brain. You do need to understand this because there is a little quiz that's coming up, right? This is just a little class participation. It's not a, it's not a test. It's just class. It's going to be marked as class participation, and I'll be giving you a question that is similar to this. So we will pick up image size for next class. But what I encourage you to do is to rewatch this class. And see if you can follow what I'm saying about image size. Right? This is this stuff is super important because when you print your document, remember I showed you this studio presentation that costs more than $24,000 to print. And if you're going to spend that amount of money to print out your document, you want to make sure that all of these images are sharp enough because we just learned that you can't use the computer screen alone to know if an image is sharp because the screen it will always look sharp it will always look it can deceive you into thinking that it's sharp until you print it and pin it up and then you realize oh crap i've wasted my money because 80% of my image is blurry. All right, guys. Okay. So that is our class for today. We are going to do in our working class, we're going to take up exercise two, right? So um, we're going to see how far we can reach in that class with exercise two. So... I will see you then. Come with your Photoshop ready to go. All right, guys. All right, guys. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, then. I know you're heading off to your next class, so you guys are free to go. I'll see you later. Thank you, sir. Bye. Can we have to pay for the Photoshop? What about the Photoshop? If you have to pay for it? Yeah. There are a few options. You can either call Mr. Campbell and you guys were sharing a link on Telegram. Or you can pay for a subscription. I think it's $20 a month. Um, or you can ask the lab tech upstairs to, um, maybe they can help you out if they have the time. Or you can use it on the school, um, computers, the, the, um, the CSA lab computers. So those are your options for the Photoshop. Okay. All right, cool.